about every six weeks we give them an assessment and it's going over what we've taught so far and we're checking to see which standards the students are doing well on, which standards they're weak in. Um, and it allows us to not only to see as teachers, okay, what do we what do we need to revisit which students, but it also allows us to look at individual students and say, you know, hey, these 15 got it great, but these five five kids are still struggling. I need to meet with them in a small group. Um, I need to pull them aside and work with subtraction a little more or multiplication or two-step, multi-step problems and decide which activities you need to go over more as a whole class and which one are just small group. Instead of just having the worksheet on the iPad, they're doing cool things and, you know, stuff that they're excited to take home and show and, you know, having the ability to be proud of something. One of the ones that I know the kids really enjoyed was done in social studies and it was a keynote presentation and we were working on USA um, physical and human characteristics. They had to combine multiple resources and put it into their own presentation and then present to the class. Um, we did a little unit on gravity and I had them, they had to make a movie trailer that explained what gravity was. I think they learn from each other. Um, sometimes students will show them the same thing that I showed them and yet understand it that much better because it came from somebody else. They're excited to show their friend what game they're doing and then their friend wants to get on that game and see how they can do that. So they're teaching each other how to learn. As we're going over our IAPs, if we know that there's a couple standards that our students were weak on, we can go in and find some questions that cover exactly those standards. If they are starting to slide backwards, we can catch them sooner and fill those gaps and fix those problems before we move on. The depth of knowledge questions that um, are accessible on the IAP help to provide more resources for the students so that I feel like we can challenge them with those types of questions. I think it helps me even more so know where my kids are at because most teachers would say, I know where this child's at, I know where this one is at, but I could sit down with a parent and specifically say, this is what I saw, this is what they're doing really well at, this is what I'm concerned about really specifically, so it's helped me give parents a response to what they can do at home too. It's just a lot more accurate. When I look at an assessment that we're going to give, and I know what standards are being covered, I choose the quick checks that align to that standard, just to kind of see where they're at before the test, and how much more needs to be prepared. It helps me in between IEPs. To me, the IEP is kind of like a bigger form of assessment check, and so in between I want to see how they're doing so that I know they're on track, and just continuing that, so it just shows me where they're at. I usually do a quick check almost almost every Friday. I, um, I look at the standards that I had taught that week and my goal on the quick check is to see how well I taught the standard. So I look for a quick check that has the standards that I taught, I assign that to the students, and if the students aren't passing the quick check, then I either pull small groups based on the results, if, you know, it's only a few kids that aren't getting it, or I reteach if it's the whole class that just bonds it. So it just makes it easy for kids to be able to be where they are and work on what they need to.